So what happened to Jean Richard watch? A watch with a once bright future that has suddenly disappeared. We're going to focus our attention on their COO as a person of interest who was last seen with Jean Richard right after this. What's up guys, it's your boy Rich here back at it again. And I know that intro made it seem like today's show is a hard hitting expose. It is not. But that was my crack at kind of hosting a 48 hours unsolved mysteries. But we are going to talk about the disappearance of Jean Richard because they are seemingly headed to closing their doors. They've already lost their US distribution because they weren't able to sell their watches in the US. And that's a shame because this watch seems to be headed as a here today and gone tomorrow brand. I always thought Jean Richard watches were really well made. Uh, they've had their in-house movement, their JR1000, and their Salida movement. Mine is a Salida movement, but uh, thank goodness it is easy uh, and affordable to service. And when I took this in for servicing, which was a basic cleaning, it only cost me $80. And I also thought that the finishings on the Jean Richards were really nice. I mean, if I compare the brushed work to, dare I say it? Do it! Audemars Piguet's Royal Oak, I think it is up there. And I think the, the ARs... RO is the benchmark for brushed work and I, it's just a finish that we can stare at all day and I really think that JR's brushed work is on par with other uh, Royal Oak. When Jean Richard debuted in the US around 2013-2014 it was around the same time that Tudor did and they missed out on a really great opportunity to take a really big chunk of that entry level luxury sports watch segment because at that time Tudor didn't have the stranglehold on that market segment the way they do today. But there were three main reasons that caused a downfall for Jean Richard. One is as good looking as those cushion case shaped designs are, they are pretty much the same looking across the board with their Terrascope lineup, Aeroscope and Aquascope lineup. Although I do like their 39mm in their Terrascope, but it just wasn't enough. And that's really a shame because they use real materials whether it was their all gold material or their two toned materials, those were solid rose gold and pink gold. It wasn't gold plating and it wasn't PVD. So they used some really nice materials and some really nice looking designs. It just, it just looked very similar to each other. And secondly is they created an identity crisis within their own brand. Oftentimes they would compare the Jean Richards with their Gerard Perigo and Daniel Jean Richard watches when really they have nothing to do with their GP, even though GP is the highest lineup within the carrying group which is formerly Sewind, it really has nothing to do with that brand. And then on top of that they would associate themselves with Daniel Jean Richard. And those were some really expensive watches as well. Those were in the eight to nine, ten thousand dollar watches. But that lineup also caused confusion for GP consumers because if they're interested in GP but they're seeing another watch in that same vicinity uh, price similarly, it caused confusion. So they got rid of Daniel Jean Richard in favor of GP as their main luxury watch but there was really no connection or association with that i do understand the tie-in with daniel jean richard because it's they simply dropped the daniel name in place of jean richard and has some dna roots as a more affordable version of the daniel jean richard because daniel jean richard actually used in-house movements it was almost as if jean richard was embarrassed to have an entry level lineup of watches because gp is super high end daniel jean richard was also considered really high end as well but there isn't anything wrong with entry level luxury watches or any entry level product at all in fact those are the most important segments for any product for example uh, BMW's flagship is their 3 series, it's not their 7 series or 8 series and Mercedes-Benz is their C-class, not their S-class because they sell more C-classes than they do their $150,000 S-classes. So it was almost as if the vibe they were giving is we're too embarrassed to present an entry level luxury watch so we want to associate it as much as possible with Gerard Perigo and Daniel Jean Richard. But that really caused a lot of confusion. And the third reason is what I call the Invicta Dilemma, which is high MSRP and low selling costs. And this was really a problem for them. And this is a big reason why they lost a US distribution because they wanted to be in higher end uh, boutique stores. And they were, they were in stores such as Feldmar. And here in LA, Feldmar is a very prestigious, almost like a landmark luxury watch store. And they were in other stores as well, like Turno, but they were also authorizing uh, Ashford.com to be an AD for them as well. And that's where I bought my Jean Richard, which retailed for $4,250, but I bought mine for $699, I believe. So it was 80% off MSRP and Ashford was an AD as well. So these boutiques, whether it was Feldmar or Turno, could not compete with this. There was no benefit for them even 
uh, as the old benefit was that they were in AD. Well, so with Ashford.com. So they were really cannibalizing each other with this high MSRP, low selling cost. It is very difficult to regain your foothold in a market once you lose that market. And the only brand to successfully do this is this brand. But Tudor didn't return with the same old product with fingers crossed and knocking on wood, hoping that we would accept them this time around. They returned with an all new Black Bay with an in-house movement and 70 hours of power reserve, along with A-list ambassadors, all the while at keeping the price pretty much the same as their previous ETA version. So if Invicta can get away with high MSRP, low selling cost scheme, for lack of a better word, why can't John Richard? Well, the answer is simple. Invicta's second home, or what I call their first home, is on one of the home shopping networks, which has a massive reach. They have a reach of over 100 million people every day, which used to be Super Bowl type of numbers. Their reach is so enormous and it is constant exposure for Invicta. So that is the reason that Invicta can succeed uh, and is succeeding because of that home shopping network. So can JR do it as well? Absolutely, I think. If they want to save themselves, they should follow the Invicta route. I know it sounds crazy, but I'm going to introduce you to some brands that are also following suit of Invicta with, because of the massive success that Invicta is having on those home shopping networks. These brands have actually surprised me and some of them are authorized dealers on these home shopping networks. So there are brands like Alpina, Ball, Glycine, Breitling, Bulova, Seiko, and not the lower end Seiko, we're talking Prospects, uh, Hamilton, Oris, Mont Blanc, Fortis, Omega, Frederick Constant, and Ralph Lauren are all selling their watches on these home shopping networks. And these prices are really beneficial to us. I want to talk about Ralph Lorenz for just a moment. So for example, their Platinum in 42 millimeters retails for $33,000 as it does on their own website. But it's also at $82.45 and then we take off an additional 20%. But the biggest key for these and the biggest reason that we shop at the Home Shopping Networks is because in addition to the lower prices, they also give us exclusive accessories and flex pay or installment payments. Different networks call them different things. So for this watch in platinum, that another 20% would make it about 60, 700. So if we plan that out over six months, a little over $1,100 a month for six months to pay off a platinum watch. This is not the type of watch that I would ordinarily consider, especially for $33,000. But at this price and this kind of a, a flex plan, it is something that actually, uh, is a little bit more appealing to me to own a platinum watch or Ralph Lauren's other world timer uh, that retails for about $11,000 and is now about $2,700 and if we calculated that over six months for example it's only about $450 a month for a world timer that uses a JLC movement. These are the kind of deals and benefits for home shopping. These watches are not pre-owned. These are brand new watches. So let's take a look at another example. Frederick Constant's 42 millimeter slimline is now about $200 a month interest-free as these are all interest-free over the next six months. This is a watch that retails for $2,800 or Omega's Planet Ocean that retails for about $8,600 is now $5,300 less another 20% so about $4,000 for a brand new watch or Breitling's 38 millimeter chronograph for about $3,000 after, uh, after all the discounts. So these prices are really are really appealing for us and these are real brands and these are not the leftover low-end um, models that these brands are partnering with these home shopping networks. I never would have thought brands like Omega and Breitling and, and uh, even Alpina would be selling themselves on these home shopping networks, but the purchasing power of these home shopping networks is enormous. Uh, no department store can even come close to their purchasing power because they sell more products in one hour than companies or brands can sell in an entire year. So for example, those Keurig uh, coffee machines, they sell 100,000, 150,000 of those in one hour. Or for example, their their computers, whenever they have a special on, for example, Dell computers, which I bought uh, at one time, um, it's a lot, they can they sell like 50,000 to 75,000 in one day. This is a lot more than all of the Best Buys can do combined. So their purchasing power is enormous. Also, the negative stigma associated with home shopping networks is no longer around. Uh, it used to be where they were cheap brands, but now there are all name brands that are carried on these home shopping networks. And I think, we as consumers are looking for great values and, and these flex pays are really helpful for us. And I think 
If Jean Richard wanted to save themselves, I think this would be a perfect marriage. They are perfect suitors for home shopping networks because, you know, the high MSRP and the low asking price over flex pace could make them uh, really appeal, appealing to a lot of us consumers to be, to be on those home shopping networks. I think it is a good way for them to salvage themselves. It is also a seemingly to be a really big and bright future for all watch brands as well. I mean, we know that whenever there's a success with with one medium or whatever successful selling strategy is used, everyone else jumps on board. Everybody wants a piece of that pie. And because of it, Invictus enormous success on one of those home shopping networks, even the other bigger brands are following suit as well. Is this the future for uh, luxury watches to be featured and sold on? Uh, possibly. But if the, if it's any indicator on the growth of newer watch brands constantly added to these home shopping networks, uh, it could make a strong argument that yes, this could be the future for selling luxury watches. Brands such as Omega, Oris, and Breitling were not brands that were added or participated in these home shopping networks just a few years ago. It was predominantly Invicta. And I think that is a really good indicator that these brands, even though they may be testing the waters, are enjoying positive experiences and sales. One of the first luxury watches to be featured on the home shopping network back in the day when they were still had that cheap stigma associated with them is Parallel. And I consider Parallel to be a luxury high-end watch, especially their turbine collection. They are a Swiss legitimate watch with a lot of history. And they pulled themselves out of the home shopping networks because even though they were happy with the sales, they were not happy with being associated with with those networks at that time. And I read recently that they were quoted as saying that they regret being ahead of the time. They didn't rule out returning to the home shopping network. So I thought that was really interesting. Our appetite for value is enormous. And as long as we continue to get fed values like this, our appetite will continue to increase. We know that retail is having a lot of problems. There are stores closing left and right, but discount stores and home shopping networks are continuing to thrive. And if home shopping networks continue to provide a successful platform for luxury watches, they have Invicta to think. Yup, Invicta. Thanks for watching and I'll see you the next time. When Jean-Claude debuted, <laughs> when Jean Richard debuted, it's as if Jean Richard hired first year college graduates without any experience or any knowledge with watches. What happened to Jean Richard? Who shot JR? Uh, I'm not sure if how many people would remember that. JR from the show Dallas? Hmm. Now you're talking my language. We might even find out who shot a well-known character on Dallas.